all of a sudden, not not long into his tenure here, gets to sleep in. Look at his leather jacket. The I people mean, who can't see the promo wow. picture. Dude. It is like Jason went back to his music days. He did. He leather did. jacket is leather on or just campus, a weather jean jacket. Looking longingly at the camera. My guy is... My guy is going back to his roots. No, no, this. it's not a jean jacket. That's Will Kane. You're right. I'm sorry. Don't that's try bite that's the style. real comfortable yeah, radio. Yeah. I apologize. He's, Will he's, Kane, uh, three to six. He's not stealing Will Kane stuff there. No. But no, congrats to Jason. He gets to sleep in a little bit. That's that's what I'm most happy for. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, yeah, buddy. So he won't even have to set an alarm. His body's so used to waking up. Who's out. next and first and last? It was you first, and you had to do two hours of it. Yeah, from four really, to six. They really lighten the load on the next generation. Jason went five to six. Who's the next generation? Who's the next sucker? I mean person to have to get up early and do that show yeah. by the Good way luck. we haven't even talked about this one of the most interesting matchups for super bowl 54 d ford against the kansas city Chiefs. man how about and, that right and got referenced by frank clark who after yes. the game said remember we were talking about last year the off lining up offsides i came over here this year and said things were going to be different i was like oh okay we're just well, doing this n- not only that Jim Nance did it in the game oh. because there were three. I think they had three offsides yeah, penalties in the first yep. quarter and a half. And uh, w- when Frank Clark jumped, because uh, Chris Jones had two of them, yeah. when Frank Clark jumped, it was like 55 offsides again in an AFC championship yeah, game for a- the Kansas City Chiefs. They needed, they needed to exercise that demon, that's for sure. <laughs> exercise wow. so the demon. They did that exactly. <laughs> so we'll break down again. We'll have a lot to get through this week and next week as we get mm-hmm. you set for Super Bowl 54 about the – what do we always say? Contrasting styles make good fights. We have contrasting styles. Well, let's styles hope. And again, here. the opening line is about a point and a half. So we've never had a closing line at Pickham. If there was going to be one, it might be. But I have a feeling Kansas City is going to stay favored here. But four times in the Super Bowl era that has been under two. And I, th- I think it'll stay under two. I do think that. Yeah, you heard, I heard Doug Kazarian, who does uh, yeah, work with right. the Daily Wager here at ESPN, mm-hmm. talking about it. With these big games, kind of like the national championship, when the public gets so much yes. more involved because it's the only game in town, I think you're going to see. And Peter Burns made this comparison, and I thought it was pretty apt how you can look at the 2019 Kansas City Chiefs and the 2019 LSU Tigers and some of the similarities there offensively with the quarterback and the kind of season that they're having in a lot of this. And I think the public's perception of that, like we respond well to offense, and I get it. The Niners offense has been nothing to sleep on. We got some pretty cool similarities we'll get to, but Patrick Mahomes, your reigning MVP, a guy that can do the things that he can do is going to be, I think, pretty enticing. To By better. the way, real quick on that, it just shows you why each year as a fan base, you can be excited Yeah, because now it's happened three times now going four wins or fewer the year before. And they're going to the Super Bowl. You had the 88 Bengals and, the, of course, the 99 Rams. Yep. You know, four or less wins, and then you're in the Super Bowl the next year. What you can do in a year, it's a team that had the second pick overall, take Nick Bosa, who was as advertised and more, put that with the other first-round pick defensive line they had and what they have on offense, and and you're able to, to, to make that switch. The NFC Championship game was a team featuring two, game featuring two teams that both had losing records right? in 2018. Yeah. Well, how about this also, just as a side note? You know, we had this massive coaching change and coaching cycle, and both Robert Sala and Eric Bieniemy were interviewed, and right. neither one got a job. Mm. Yet they're both playing in Super Bowl yeah, they 54. Are. Oh, how about that? Stock just keeps going up, yeah, doesn't it? how about that? <laughs> the so, price just went up. Exactly right. The price just went up another 15%. <laughs> uh, so, meanwhile, let's talk a little. Thank you very much. Well uh, done. The, the, the price that may be going taken, up for them. The taken, way, the yes. Taken. The price just went up another 10%. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then there is the issue of the teams that didn't get there. We right. just talked about what Green Bay needs to do. Then there's what's going to happen in Tennessee. Look, give Mike Vrabel all the credit in the world. I mean, that footage we that the people put out there of him like wearing the the, che- the vest and warming players up before the games and pumping them. That's why people like to play for Mike Vrabel, yes, right? Exactly he, right. He puts it out there on the line. But they have major things they've got to deal with. Derrick Henry was the blunt force trauma instrument that got them into the AFC <laughs> Championship game. He was held to under 70 yards, 69. He's going to be a free agent. Ryan Tannehill, their quarterback, is going to be a free agent. There are lots of things that that, uh, John Robinson, the general manager of the Tennessee Titans, has to decide on where he's going to spend his money, right? Because this team could either look somewhat similar to what it was at the end of the season or vastly different. Who are you more comfortable overpaying? That's the issue, because you're going to overpay for either one of them. I was going to say, either one of these, by any account, is going to be paid more than probably what you should in this one. So in 2020, knowing what we know, 
who are you more comfortable with? Well, I, I guess my answer to that would be they could pro- they could probably afford both. I, you know, we have to look at cap numbers because even the top cap number for the top running back is not that. Is, I mean, we know where it is, right? Because it was set by Gurley and, and by Zeke. And, and Zeke. It's in the and what? Four, for, and Le'Veon yeah. Bell, right? The what? Fourteen, fifteen million dollar range. You know, so is it going to be in that range? And for Tannehill, Tannehill getting thirty five million a year. Thirty million a year? Is, oh no, is, I don't think he's. So gonna... I, I don't either. So I guess that's my point. I don't think he's going to make that. So I think between the two of those, I do think they could absorb both those, because for for I know we talk about the running game, but with Tannehill, if you extrapolate his numbers, and I and I'm good at simple math, this would be a little more. He played You're in good 12, at math. He played in twelve games, seventy percent completion, over twenty seven hundred yards, twenty two touchdowns, six interceptions. Put that over 16 games on what it would be. Those are good numbers, right? The, the, you he was a at, he was a good he was a very good you, quarterback you, during the regular you season. You blind those numbers of what it would be for 16 blind games, resume, yeah. and, and you would say, you know what, that's pretty good. Not turning the ball over a lot, you know, has a lot of touchdowns, and then you could have a running game to go with it. So I I, I don't know see why they couldn't have them both. Yeah, and and the other thing is with Derrick Henry, it's a fascinating study, right? Because clearly, look. Tennessee is 0-2 in playoff games where he doesn't run for 100 yards, 3-0 and when he does. So as in, the, in their current uh, makeup, as the Tennessee Titans go, I mean, as Derrick Henry goes, so go the Tennessee Titans. But Derrick Henry is 26 years old. He is in no way, shape, or form a finesse back. He is a bruising, get my shoulders straight downhill, running back, and that's how he's going to win. How many years are you comfortable paying that guy? Because, again, he was a second-round pick, so they don't have the luxury of the fifth-year option. I mean, I guess they could franchise tag him. But, I mean, are you comfortable? How many more years are you banking on that being able to sustain itself? I'm not comfortable I'm not comfortable paying him top dollar. The franchise tag is an interesting one in here because it's – and I think this is what we learned with Zeke and all of this as we looked at that contract and had questions about it during this season and with Gurley and all them. It's – are you paying for who you are or anticipating what you want to be? Correct. Because with all those rushing stats with Derrick Henry, it's because, and Dan Orlovsky pointed this out, plenty of people did, it's because you built leads passing early in those games. Yep. Even in this game, you were taking shots there. You get a lead, and then you wear it out with your running back. Like That's how we get to these arbitrary rushing statistics that equal wins and losses in a lot of this stuff. And so I say, all right, if you're the Titans on your best day, you're looking and saying, we got a quarterback that we might trust now. Finally, we've got A.J. Dillon that we drafted is pretty good. Corey Davis had a much better year than he's had in a while. One of their old top five picks uh, in the wide receiver core there. Can we start to transition to being an offense that's more like the Kansas City Chiefs, that's more like these teams that are airing it out and being successful and not having to win games, scrapping it out potentially in all this one? And are you willing to pay Derrick Henry to be a part of that process in potentially a lesser role? Real quick, A.J. Brown, you meant. A.J. Brown, sorry, I said A.J. Dillon. By the way, he was invisible in the first two games. They finally got some big plays to him early in that contest. I I mean, would you try and pay him both? I think you try. I think you find it. Now, because the thing, if you want to tag one of them, who you tag, and, and then if you tag the running back, is he going to do a Zeke yeah. and say, I'm sitting out if you tag Derrick Henry? I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I don't either, but yeah. I don't know. I right. mean, does, does that Melvin Gordon situation scare anybody from but, last year? Yeah. Well, the only thing is, Melvin Gordon was under contract and he was losing five million. You know, he was losing. Oh no, I get Derrick it. Derrick Henry the idea, isn't the yeah. idea of your team not really missing you right. in so, that time. So Derrick Henry knows this is it, right? Yeah. Derrick Henry knows this is the the money the, the, the money contract for especially him. as a second year player right. or a second round player rather by the way jeff uh jeff Tan- uh, ryan Tannehill is good friends with jeff darlington and jeff has said to me on several occasions ryan's a guy who's happy where he is maybe the, the most money doesn't mean that much to i him. remember maybe he made money as a seventh pick overall yeah, he, he, he made first round pick, pick. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely so we'll see what happens there all right coming up as the <laughs> afc goes through changes will the chiefs become the one thing that remains a constant over the next decade we'll get to that next goal can we go espn radio espn news